Thanks for joining me. I'm going to show you the creation of Fall at Falling Water. Here's the inspiration photo and the initial design layout. This is what I do with the fabric. Simply put it on the surface and then I sew it down. I've added here the layout for the building and below that you can see I've actually used chalk to help me indicate where different pieces are going to be. This is the building pieces sewn down and the initial water for falling water. Bit more of a close-up after those pieces have been sewn down. You can see that I am going in multiple directions, especially with the water, following what would be the flow, just so that it gives an indication of what's going on. Here we see in a couple of these photos, lots and lots of pins holding the fabric down. And I, I fold it, I cr crinkle it up, uh, to give the texture that is needed. So we'll see that. And you can see that the texture helps next to the pieces of the water just to give some visual interest. Lots and lots of pins. As I was doing this, I realized I'm going to need to get more pins as I'm doing more of these. challenge with one hand. Just trying to show you that I'm sewing through multiple layers of fabric and trying not to catch the pins. So I wanted to show you what it looked like as I'm sewing it and across the layers. Here's a different angle of it so you can see it really is puffy and curvy um, and I sort of go with the flow of the design that's needed. You're going to see me doing more sewing so that you can really understand uh, part of my process. So as I do this, I, I need to, I do back tack at the beginning, and I'm just trying to make sure that I'm capturing the edges of the things that I want, just so that it resembles the leaves, while making sure that I don't run over any pins, because that's extremely frustrating. And I'm not paying too close attention to where um, where the other uh, seams were going uh, because I do want to 
texture. This is a texture. It's like right here, you could see right here, I have all of these ridges. And so I need to slowly capture those. And brush that. those so that those keep down and then watch the pins. Sharp needles, strong sewing machine, all a good thing. And lots of pins. So you can see the uh, the process with that. One of the wonderful things is I use multiple colors of thread in my top thread. And in this quilt, I've actually used white thread on the back and it has created this design on the black. It's really incredible. It's fascinating to see. Fascinating. And I really enjoy it. Um, I'm going to be looking forward to using more of that. You could sort of see how it could be really visually exciting. It's always important when I'm doing this to look at both sides of the fabric to put the piece up on the wall so that I can have a good look at it, step away from it, go get a drink of water or something, because it was in that moment that I discovered really that the water was not working and I needed to add this new rock or foundation. Sometimes it's just easier to work on the back. Normally when you so you use a bobbin thread that matches. But I liked the idea of having all of a white thread on the back so that you could see the design. However, when I'm over sewing, or I'm sewing multiple times, it can peek through a little. I'm not often so much uh, ripping like seams or removing uh, those pieces, but in this case I needed to because it was in a black part and I wanted to be able to have more specific thread work. So you can see here the rock and I have changed the water using more white and that made a huge, huge difference. Here you'll see uh, me scanning up the piece from the bottom and you'll see some of the textures that I've created. The tree, it's not an actual tree. It sort of looks like it. You'll see the pieces here with the thread in the black there. And I went through the, the tree area and I actually added multiple lines of using a dark fabric or dark thread in order to create um, tree trunks and tree branches. I also did some extra thread work on the building to give it shadow and to create more of the building details. I have a close-up of this so that you can see how the fabrics and the thread play interact together, especially at the bottom of the piece. And here's the piece pretty much finished. I'm going from the top to the bottom. You'll see I have created uh, textures, visual textures, sewing uh, closely together. I've layered lots of different fabrics so that it gives the visual impact of it being fall. And I'm pleased with how the water turned out. Here's the back. I just have to say the back is a lot of fun. 
lots of great texture. Yes, I trimmed all of those little pieces off before I gave it to my brother-in-law, and it took time. Here's the, the water, and the back of the water, and I think this is really a dynamic thing, and I am going to be using this technique for some future projects. Maybe not even using the other layers of fabric, because it's so very interesting. showing the back and I and that really gives you the indication of how I handled the trees and the tree branches at the top and a slow movement down I added a lot of thread um, around the building features and the water you can see it really creates an impact there for me I'm just providing some more views of the thread work and the fabric play so that you can get some close-ups of it and notice the, the three-dimensionality of it. It's really uh, a lot of fun. And this is the final piece that was given to my brother-in-law. So you can see the different play. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video showing you my progress and my process with how I play with fabric and thread work to create beautiful designs, beautiful images. My brother-in-law really liked it. And I hope you do too. Thank you. On the left here is a full image of the piece. And on the right is a full image of the back of the piece. He may actually put it uh, together so that he can view both sides of it. If you want to see more of my creative endeavors, let me know in the comments. Thanks.